Welcome back to our session on statics. We've just covered a basic introduction on um, torques and we're going to look more in depth at that, get a better intuitive feel for how those work today. However, before we move on, I got to get something off my chest. So uh, after I finished the other, the, the our last video, I realized that something was wrong on here. And uh, basically what we're looking at is this. I said that the change in angular momentum is I omega. No, no. The change in angular momentum is the change in I omega. I omega is the angular momentum. So many times we say that is I alpha where alpha is angular acceleration. This is all zero anyway. It doesn't matter for statics, but it's good to know that that equation's wrong. That's not right. The second thing that I want to adjust is I did not clarify that this seesaw is massless. It has no mass. And we're going to make that assumption typical when we're dealing with anything. We're going to say it's massless, it, it can't bend, it's like a perfect material. So I just wanted to get, clarify that going forward. There will be a time when we'll start introducing mass. We're not ready for it yet. Now that said, let's jump into the fun stuff. So the other day I was uh, over at our park and um, you know I was like thinking through swings and how they work and things like that and I, I came up with this idea. L let's imagine you're at, a, you're at a friend's house and they have this, uh, you know, here's the roof of their porch, their ceiling of their porch and it has like this fascia on it that comes down and uh, you know you're down here, you're, you're sitting down kind of hanging out having some tea and then you look over and you realize that they have like this little porch swing. And what they've decided to do is they've attached this porch swing right here. So it just kind of, you know, goes back and forth, just swings back and forth. And what I started wondering is, you know, I'm thinking of it as things move, but um, I, one, of, one of the things I started wondering is what's going on, let's say it's at its extreme right here and there's tension in the wire and let's say that that tension is say somewhere around a hundred pounds what's going on back here like what's going on it where the roof of the porch connects with the uh, with the house this is a, known as a cantilever problem and it gives us a feel for how torques work we're gonna take a look at this and figure out what's happening at this point what's going on when we apply a torque in this direction and um, how can we understand how to resolve that and how to solve everything we have, uh, resolve everything that's going on here. We're going to start by using all the same rules we've been using thus far. Um, we know that the sum, let me, let me just erase my little person, get him out of there. We know that the sum about points is going to be zero of or sum of, of torques around any point is going to be zero. Sum of forces is going to be zero. We have all the tools in our tool belt we need. Let's let's uh, let's go on this. Let's let's get the information we need and see what we can see what we can solve. Now let's say that this is about an eight foot overhang, and this comes down about one foot right here. We'll also say that uh, this 100 pounds comes out like this, and it's at an angle of 30 degrees. We're going to say that um, this is point A. This is point B and this is point C. So that should be able to get us going on this. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we want to know, well, let's talk about our challenge. Our challenge is what's going on here? What really is going on? Let's draw our free body diagram first and see if we can make some sense of this. Here we go. Here's the roof of the porch. We have Oops, let's make that let's make that red. We have a force. We're just gonna say force C. Now check this out. We know that the only other th this thing's not moving. So we know that whatever force is happening at A is equal and opposite to force C. And as a matter of fact, I'll tell you right now, it's a hundred pounds. So we have the force of A acting in an equal and opposite direction of force C. However, something else is happening in force A. Let's take a look at this. Let's say you're at, at A. Force A is just pulling on you. But force C is twisting you. It's wanting to, force C is wanting to rotate this thing like this. It's trying to 
basically pull this whole roof of the porch down. That's what it's trying to do. And so as a result, at this place right here, we're going to have a torque induced. Basically, this torque at A is going to be equal and in the opposite direction to the torque caused by C. Let's try and figure that out. So uh, first, let's get this uh, this this white one off. That's that's that tells you like the sense of what's trying to happen, what the bar wants to do, and the torque applied at A fights it. Now we know how to do our sum of forces equals zero, right? We don't really need it. We know we we already know what we need to know. We know that force C in the vertical direction coming down is 50 pounds. Remember, this is 30 degrees. Sine of 30 times 100, sine of 30 is 0.5, 100 times 5, or times 100 is 50. And we know that the horizontal is the cosine of 30 times 100. And because you're so savvy and because you've memorized all these, that's 86.6 pounds. So we know what's happening at C, and therefore, that's exactly what's happening at A. A is a pushing back with 86.6 .6 pounds, pushing up with 50. What we don't know is what the torque is at A. Now we know that the sum of torque about A, nothing's moving, right? Okay. Well, if, if nothing's moving, then the sum of the torques about A is zero. We know that there's a force due to C. Let's, let's do the down component first. It's all being applied right here. The down component in this direction, we're basically looking at the perpendicular distance to right here. The down component has, is going in the negative direction. It's trying to um, turn things clockwise. So it's a negative 10 pounds or 10 feet times 50 pounds. Okay. In addition, the horizontal component of C and it's perpendicular to uh, it's perpendicular distance to A is two f is one feet, one foot, one foot right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I said uh, I said 10 pounds back here. Uh, that's eight or eight, 10, eight, 10 feet. I meant eight feet. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, eight feet times times 50 pounds. And then we're going to subtract uh, at one foot. 86.6. Okay, but that's not everything. This is applying a torque, this one and this one. In addition, A is applying a torque. So that's going to, and A is applying a torque in the positive direction. Plus, actually, let's make that, uh, let's make that, that pink. Plus torque in the A direction. Let's get torque A by itself. And we're going to add these. So that's going to be 486.6 foot pounds. Okay. Now, to give you an idea just of how foot pounds work, if you want to turn a screwdriver, you're looking and you turn, you know, you're, you're turning pretty hard, you're reefing on it. We're looking at about five foot pounds. So, of course, you know, 486 foot pounds, that's a lot of weight. Um, now we know what's happening at A. We know that not only is this cantilever pushing back in this direction and in this direction, it's also keeping the thing from rotating. Now what I'd like to show you is uh, another way that we can do this. We do the sum of torques about A equals zero and we say that equals RC cross FC. Instead of doing eight feet and one foot, we're going to go back to the definition. We're going to take, we're going to find out what is the torque at this point, R cross F. And then we're going to add, oh, sorry, that's going to be a, uh, well, we can just leave it like that. We can just make everything positive at this point because with your vectors, they'll, they'll take care of themselves. Um, and then we're going to add torque of A. All right, let's try and solve this. Let's, uh, here we go, here we go. Um, so the torque of A 
equals negative because you know we're going to move it to the other side the radius as a vector that's going to be 8i minus 1j because you're going 8 feet over 1 feet 1 foot down now we're going to our cross product is going to be our force of C as a vector. So that's going to be negative 86.6 I minus 50 J. All right, this is our first time thus far jumping into like vectors and cross products. Well, for cross products. Let's see what we have here. All right. Um, we're going to do, well, we're doing a cross product. So I and I, that nothing's going to happen there. I cross J. All right. Let's get that, bring that negative down. I cross J is going to be 400, but remember that 50 is a negative. So it's going to be negative 400. Now we're going to do uh, the next term, which is J, not, well, J and J, and nothing's going to happen there, but J cross I. Now J cross and I, that's going to be a negative. All right, let's, let's keep, let's keep, uh, keep, keep track of all these, right? We're going to, we're going to add, and it's going to be negative one from here, negative one times negative 86.6. And because it's J cross I, we're going to bring in another negative. Now we put these all together, we have three negatives. We're going to say negative, negative 400 minus 86.6. Well, what happens? Negative 486 equals positive 486.6 foot pounds. We get the same thing. I brought this up because many times as we look at what is the radius and what is the force, it can be tricky to keep track of it. Like here, is it one or is it eight? What are we doing? But as long as we keep in mind that we can use our R cross F, it's something we can hang our hat on and we'll come up with the same answer. Look over this, make sure it makes sense. I hope this gives you a feel of how torques and forces work. We're going to jump more in depth into this in three dimensions soon enough, but I wanted to show you that by using our sum of torques equals zero and our sum of forces equal to zero, we can solve these problems and understand what's happening in, um, in these scenarios. Until next time, thanks a lot.